Hey guys, just down the shop today and I um, picked up this thing for a few dollars, about 250 yen, so three dollars. Just a USB charger for your car. Uh, it tells me it's 800 milliamps output at 5 volts and uh, 12 volt input. iPhone 5 compatible. I don't have an iPhone 5, but that doesn't matter. So, um, have a quick look at this thing. Black injection molded plastic, cigarette lighter in the front there. Looks like we can unscrew this and there's our fuse as is tradition and then um, on the end we've got our uh, LED and our USB port so as a great philosopher once said let's not turn it on let's take it apart okay to get inside looks like we just have to unscrew the front and the little collar there comes off and we probably just have to split it like that easy done so what have we got Looks like we've got a little inductor, capacitor, chip there. Looks almost like it's a, uh, a buck converter. I was almost expecting just a 5-volt uh, linear regulator, but, man, we might be a little bit more efficient these days. So we've got a usual single-sided PCB there, and uh, a few passives on the top, one active component in the middle there. That is a MC. 31063A. So let's look at a data sheet for that. See what that one is. It's going to be like a little buck control, buck converter control I see. And I'll also reverse engineer the circuit. We'll figure out how this thing works. Okay, so I found the uh, the data sheet here. It's an on semi. Um, the one we've got maybe the genuine item, maybe a copy, who knows, but it's a 1.5 amp step up, step down inverting switching regulator. So it says here it's a monolithic control circuit containing the primary functions required for DC to DC converters. Internally temperature compensated, comparator control duty cycle, blah, 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 blah. Basically it's a buck boost converter. Um, down here it says we're good for a 3 to 40 volt input, low standby current, output switch current up to 1.5 amp. And if you need more, you can actually uh, put an output transistor so that your, uh, your converter chip, it drives a transistor which then takes the bulk of the current, but we don't have that sub. So the maximum our circuit can put out is probably about 1.5 amps. Um, it says 800, 800 milliamps, so you're probably just running a bit conservative on there. But it says here, uh, what's that, frequency operation, 100 kilohertz, that's how fast it switches. And uh, we've got a 2% tolerance on the output voltage. So here's our schematic. All of this is what's in here. Now the basic way this works is we have our 12 volt here and our ground or zero volts here. The 12 volt comes in, we've got two smoothing caps which are just straight across the, uh, the input. A small one, uh, 100 nanofarad to, to sink any uh, high frequency noise that's coming out of here and then a larger bulk capacitor just for the normal decoupling duties. Comes in, pin 6 is our voltage input to the chip, that's what our supply is to run the chip. It comes up through this low uh, value resistor here, 0.15 ohm. Now the reason we have that is for two reasons. One reason is pin 7 is the current sense. So that's going to sense how much current is being drawn by the circuit. The other two pins here, that's where our main current is coming into the chip. There's two transistors, then it comes out of here. So our main current path is along here, up around through pin 1 and 8, through the two trans switching transistors in the chip, comes out of pin 2 here, and then out to our output. Now these two here, these two resistors, that's our voltage divider network. That's what's pretty much setting our output voltage. If we adjust these, we're going to adjust here. So we can make that a different voltage from 5 volts just by adjusting these two. We've got our usual uh, diode and inductor. That's what's actually doing the uh, buck duties with the switching, turning on and off. We've got over here, that's our output filter capacitor, 470 microfarad, so that's a larger one, that's basically smoothing out any ripple. We've got our LED and resistor here, that's just lighting up to tell us that it's on. And these two here, this is another little voltage divider, that's what tells the iPhone or whatever how much current it can draw. So if we adjust these two values, we can tell the iPhone that this can kick out a different current than, you know, if we have a higher power one, we use different resistors. If it's lower power, 1 amp, 2 amp charging rates, that's what's setting that charging rate through the data pin, or data pins, sorry. 
And we've got just a capacitor here that's setting the switching frequency. So power comes in, it's smoothed here, it's set the, uh, the output voltage here, current sensing comes through, does a switching here at the frequency defined by this, uh, this capacitor, comes through, is filtered again here to make sure the output's nice and smooth, indicator we've got voltage here, charging rate set here, voltage out. That's all it is. There is another addition we can make to this circuit if we were inclined to spend a little bit more money, and that is from our 5 volts and 0 volts here, we can add an inductor and a capacitor down to ground. So we've got 5 volts here, 0 volts here. So if we were to add this here onto here, this inductor, one point zero micro henry and a 100 microfarad capacitor that will then decrease our output ripple that's basically just a little lc network a l for the inductor c for capacitor lc network and that will just drop any any voltage ripple high frequency ripple down to ground and that will give us a cleaner output but for an iphone or something it's not strictly required and uh, capacitor inductors are kind of expensive when you're talking about a two dollar three dollar charger so they haven't put that in it's basically going to drop the uh, drop the ripple from around about 120 milli millivolts to about 40 millivolts or so according to the uh, the data sheet so you know it's a nice thing to have there but not required for this application so that's pretty much how it works let's plug it in see how it performs so we're plugged in I got a little uh, meter here it's telling us voltage current uh, time, that's how long it's been running once I, it starts drawing current and uh, milliamp hour, that's for battery testing but we're mainly interested in the voltage and current so with an open circuit or no current draw at least we've got 5.35 volts so if we, I turn this one up we'll see the current there start to come up so we got 0.7 let's bring up to half an amp About half an amp there, we're still above 5 volts, so no problems at all. We'll come up a bit higher, we'll go to 800 milliamps, that's the rating on the packet. About there, 5.26, so that's at the rated current. Of course, we want to go further than that, so let's take it to 1 amp. 5.2 volts, we're still looking pretty good. Oh, it's failed there. Look at that. 3.5 volts. So it looks like... Oh, wow. Okay, 1.3 amp. Yeah, no. Doesn't like going over 1.4 amp. Looks like 1.3 amp is our maximum. Even 1.2 amp. So I'm going to say 1.2 amp is the maximum this thing can put out. After that, it just collapses big time. All right, well, next test. We'll see what the ripple looks like on the scope, eh? So here's a waveform of our output. This, of course, isn't the uh, at the 5 volt level. This is zoomed right in onto the waveform. So for our RMS value, we're getting 11.4 millivolts. So that's pretty small ripple for a switch mode power supply that costs three dollars. So yeah we could probably filter out some more of this stuff if we put a bypass capacitor like a small valley capacitor on the output. If we put that inductor and capacitor like I drew in the uh, schematic that will help as well but I mean for three dollars a little circuit like this yeah that's not too bad. Definitely better than what I expected it would be. So that's that's reading at one amp as well. So this is rated at 800 milliamps we measured it up to 1.2 amp before it freaks out and drops the voltage. So it's performing pretty good for what it is, really. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.